Hey, yo. <laughs> Jim Panky here. Uh, a little different format, a little different just messing around. Just uh, sitting here wondering, hey, what am I, what am I going to do today? And uh, so I went and chastised the waterworks for digging a ditch across my yard and not filling it back in. And I uh, went to the post office and just uh, just hanging out. So just seeing who might show up. Well, we got a few folks. Y'all say howdy. Uh, say hi to each other, all of that. Uh, I am streaming live here. Obviously, you, if you found me, I'm on Facebook and YouTube at the same time. So I'm I'm kind of multitasking here. I'm everywhere. I'm like Santa Claus. Hmm. So basically, I'm just here for your amusement. And uh, I don't know how much delay is between me talking and y'all typing, but hopefully I, I can see your see your questions. And I'm just kind of here at your beck and call and uh, just to just to see what's going on and answer any kind of oddball questions you got and tell you, you know, if you want to know know about me and want to know about picking and how I approach stuff, this is a great time to ask if you want to know just random stuff. I mean, people ask me all the time, what kind of strings, what kind of picks? And I've got other banjos here and they're just right behind right behind the couch here. So I, I'm willing to go grab those. Let me, let me ah, sit up straight. I've got a permanent, I got a permanent crick in my back here. All right, so here's our first question. Here's our first question. So McJingle Boy asks, what finger picks do I use? I use the Ernie Ball Peaky Picks. And I've used these since the 80s. Uh, I mean, I've used them for a long time. And I, I kind of got into these quite by accident i really didn't uh i really didn't mean to I, I i was using at the time i was using dunlop finger picks but here in this area chattanooga area i'm in georgia but there was a picking contest just about every month sometimes every weekend and and there was one at northgate mall up in hickson tennessee just north of chattanooga and there was a guy walks up and hand me a set of these picks. He says, here, stick those in your, uh, here, try those out. And so I did, and I hated them. I just absolutely, I didn't like them. Well, I broke one of my Dunlop finger picks. I stepped on it, and when I tried to straighten it, it broke. And the only thing I had in my case were these. And I thought, well, we'll give them a try because it was convenient, and that's what I had. And so I wound up using these. So uh, this is kind of a do as I say and not as I do. I mean, for me, it's really difficult now to use other picks. These are just, I'm just so used to them. But I'm, like I say, I've been using them since the 80s. So, you know, I buy, I buy them by the bag, you know, about 24 in a bag. And, and they do wear. Uh, they don't hold up nearly as good as like the Dunlops or Nationals or any of the other brands that's on the market. So there's that. Let's see. Have I done a strain changing video for banjo? Not really, but kind of. Uh, I And I don't know if you actually see me change the strings or not in the video. I did an unboxing of an RK20 recording king, and I did change strings on it. Uh, and, I, you know, my memory's bad, so maybe somebody knows whether or not I changed the <laughs> strings in that video. I know I did. I don't know if... <laughs> Check that out. And, and I haven't done a string changing video. And, uh, you know, that might be something that's useful. And uh, thanks for the idea. And, and maybe we'll do that. I'll have to set up a little different and get me a little workbench here. Usually I'm changing strings here on the couch in my lap. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh -oh. I don't want to miss anybody, y'all. So just please bear with me as I... Yeah, so Evan, this is, hey, y'all, Evan Sands, uh, Evan's a picker, man. Y'all just don't know. Uh, I, Evan and I used to pick at all the, he went to all the same contests as that, that I did. Uh, so y'all say hi to Evan. Evan, Evan can show y'all a thing or two about the banjo, that's for sure. Uh, 
Let's see. Well, am I a virgin? Well, no, I'm not. I've got a son. <laughs> hey, I said I'd answer about anything. <laughs> uh, let's see. How do you play four string banjo bluegrass? Man, I really don't know. Uh, most people, what they do here is if they've got a four string banjo, they will uh, they will have somebody make them a five string neck so that they can play bluegrass on it. You really you really need that fifth string to get that to get that bluegrass sound. I mean that that's such a big part of it, you know. <laughs> You know, you got that drone ringing, so that that's a big deal. Hey, Dean, inspired your girlfriend to pick up the banjo. Hey, that's great. Everybody needs a girlfriend that'll play the banjo. Man, that's awesome. It, it's, so, is she, Dean, is she using my lessons? If she is, tell her to post a video from time to time. Would love to just keep 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 those keep those going. I'd li I like I like to see folks learning. I like to see folks learning. Let's see. All right. Well, here we go. How do I keep from hitting the other strings when trying to play chords? And well, I, I bet you know the answer. But let me give you a couple of tips. Uh, but but the answer is practice. You know, you, you really have to spend a lot of time putting your fingers on on there. But one thing. So let me. So I'm holding a C chord and obviously so I, all, all of those are ringing true and I'm not touching anything, but if you'll look at my fingers, you, and let me get a little angle here. You see how curled they are? Boy, that's hard to tell. I try not to move my hand around too much, but you, you really want, you really want your fingers really curled. You want, you want that, you want that arch in your fingers and you want right up on the tip if you can. And if you feel yourself touching that other string, you know, you just, so you're either touching it or you're not. And so as soon as that finger's not touching that string and you don't feel it buzzing against it, that's fine. I mean, you're not looking for anything other than just to not be touching the string. And so that, I, th I think that, but yeah, practice, 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 practice. Uh, let's see. Y'all forgive me. I am. Da, da, da. If I've missed you. Hold on. Y'all got tons of questions. Y'all, y'all, y'all bear with me. I, there we go. Here we go. I got, not only am I new to this live stream thing and then this little platform that I'm using, but I'm also new to this computer and I, I keep hitting the wrong button and it takes me, takes me places I don't want to go. Uh, let's see what this question is. Can you recommend a tune for beginners that has a real wow factor when you nail it down? Honestly, anything that you're doing and as a beginner, you know, Nail Cripple Creek. Nail the teetotal heck out of Cripple Creek. Get it down. Do Cripple Creek. Learn the other stuff in my 10 lesson series. Get all of that. And then go to my Cripple Creek expansion pack. And there's going to be more licks and stuff that you can do there. What I've also got a playlist out there. It's like, learn these next. I, I forget what the name of it is. And I should have links and I should be prepared, but I'm not. But, uh, but, do do those next. I mean, there's and play something people know. People love ballads of Jay Clampett. You know, they like to hear the Beverly Hillbillies. So that that's one for sure that you know that, you, that I recommend. All right, here we go. Do you have a process for learning a new song? Well, yeah, kind of. So you know, I I tend to think of melody. Try to play a melody, try to fit the rolls over it that I know that feel comfortable. Uh, if I can use a lick that will make a melody note 
or play emphasize the melody, then I'll do that. But I mean, and how do I know what licks and rolls fit good? It's a secret. And banjo players are sworn. There, there's once you reach a certain level, there, there's an initiation, and we're sworn to secrecy on how we know what stuff's going to work. And so I really can't tell you that. <laughs> no. Nah. So honestly, honestly, and no one likes this answer, but the, the honest to gosh truth on how do I know what licks fit good? I try. Them. I'll try a lick or I'll try a roll. How, do I need an alternating roll or a forward and reverse roll? Or maybe a forward roll works here. I don't know. And so what I do is I try it. It's the same way as I get dressed in the morning. Does this shirt look good? I don't know. Let's put it on. Is this too big? I mean, when, when I see a shirt hanging on the rack, do I know if it's too big or too small? I don't know. I got to put it on. And so the same thing with rolls. I mean, I just try one and see how it sounds. And if I don't like it, then I don't then I, I don't use it. I'll pick another role that I like. I don't necessarily need, I don't necessarily need, you know, I don't need to play the same role that Earl might have played there or JD or Bill Keith, but I might like to play some other role. Here's a, here's a good example. I like to use Cripple Creek. This is, this is a great example for Cripple Creek. So let me tilt down here a little bit. So Cripple Creek, you know, you're using that alternating role. But what if we didn't or couldn't use an alternating role? What what and I used to set rules for myself and say, okay, let's play Cripple Creek with forward and reverse roll. And then I then I think, well, what, how the heck do I do that? So, that's not great, but it works. And so, how do I know which rolls to use? I just try them. What if I used a forward roll? And then I get to decide which ones I want to use. So how do I know? How do I know? Just, just try them. Just try things. And don't be afraid to, don't be afraid to mess up. I watched some kids one day. They were out here at the park and they were skateboarding. And they kept trying this. I don't know, it was a trick. And, and I sat there and watched them probably 30, 45 minutes. And they never hit that trick. They never once hit it, but they never quit trying. And they kept trying different things and, and do be, be like that, you know, just try things until they work. All right. Dean McAllister. Thank you so much. I mean, that's, that, that's the highest praise ever. I'm telling you. Hey, Joe from Wales. Let's see. Billy Strings. Yeah, she's a real good picker. <laughs> I see. Sarah is asked, is the banjo my favorite instrument to play? Absolutely. I, uh, it's the musical instrument that I can speak with. It's, it's the one that I can express myself. If I am angry, I can express that on the banjo. If I'm sad, or if I'm anxious about something, or if I'm happy, I, I so this this is a, this instrument, you know, the banjo. I I feel not not only is it my favorite one to play, but it, it's the one that I I feel like is part of my voice. Uh, got a beginner question. I tend to look at my right hand during practice, and the left seems to be on autopilot. I notice most players are focusing on the left. Do you focus on one or the other? Uh, yeah, generally here. So here, here's your logic or here's some logic. Take it, take it however you want. I, I mean, 
adjust myself here. Uh, well, here, it'll just be like that. Try to, let's, let's eliminate that backlight. There we go. There we go. Da, 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 da. <laughs> okay, so as long as your left hand is just up here in the money zone, you know, as long as it's up here, there's really not a lot of reason to look at it. But if I have to travel up the neck, I need to be looking where I'm going. So if I'm going to go, okay, I've done a low break. So if I'm traveling up the neck, then I need to be looking where I'm going. So I'm looking to where I'm going next. My right hand, let me ask you, what are you looking at when you're looking at your right hand? Once you get those rolls down, and if you're holding your banjo properly, now if you've got it laid down in your lap, you know, if you're down here, then yeah, you can look at your hand. And you can look at the strings, but if you're holding your banjo up, when I look down at my hand here, I can see my thumb, it's covering my other fingers. So I'm I'm not really processing that. Left hand though, oh gosh. Uh yeah, I'm totally, totally processing that left hand. So So I'm I'm really I'm going to look at that left hand. Let's see. So I really don't focus on the I really don't focus on my right hand at all. Uh, let's see. Also, I started playing banjo after playing guitar for a long time, so I don't post with my fingers. Is it a matter of preference to post or not, or should I practice doing it? Practice doing it. Seriously. It's not. Look, it's your banjo. You can do what you want to. But let's look at the masters of this instrument. If you're a guitar player and if you're a classical player, you study the masters. And, and, and those guys like those classical guitar masters, they had certain techniques that they did. And we model after those tech, though we model after those players. Let's let's look at our let's look at our banjo masters and see how they do it. If we want to be like the banjo masters, if you want to be like Earl, Ralph Stanley, Don Reno, Sonny Osborne, J.D. Crow, you gotta you gotta put your finger down. You got that's part of the technique. That's part of the process. Uh, you don't have to, you don't have to, but let me really encourage you because it's not also about, I mean, like your guitar, you need maybe not to post or to anchor for some reason, but I, you know, I know a bunch of classical players and they post, they post, they may not post on the top of the guitar, but they'll post on a string or they're they're resting somewhere, but post that thing. Put put those fingers down. It, it it it's also it will also affect your tone. It affects your sustain, and it gives you some control over that that you don't normally have if you don't do it. I mean, you're wearing finger picks. You're playing bluegrass banjo. Model, model those masters. Model those masters. You make a list, make a list of banjo players of all of the, all of the ones that hang on y'all. Princess, get me off. Get in. <laughs> Sorry y'all. Uh, nothing like a cat and Venetian blinds, <laughs> uh, but it, but, but model, model the masters, model those players. I mean, make a list for me of all the players that are, that we, that we all know and love that don't post a finger and then make a list of those that do. 
I think the answer's there. Uh, is Washburn B14 a pretty good banjo? It's a great first banjo. It's fantastic. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I've been playing banjo for a few months, and I bought a 70s Harmony, and it's helped, but it's not good equipment. Yeah, they're pretty sketchy. What do you have to say about buying one? Uh, one of the things that I always tell my, my students is like when, when you're about to buy a banjo, look at your budget. If you've got $150 that you said, I'll spend $150 for a banjo. Double that. Whatever it is, just double it. Go ahead and spend the money. You're going to do yourself a huge favor. I mean, yeah, you can learn on, you know, I my first banjo was a $150 banjo and it got me going, but it wasn't very long until I got the next step up. And so I recommend whatever you're looking at, get the next step up. Yeah, it's money and it's expensive. And I don't know if I'm going to learn. And what if I don't like it? You'll have a better chance of, if you don't learn it, you'll have a better chance of selling a better banjo than you will the, the El Cheapo. Hey, Evan Sands. Let's see. Shane, an interested in seeing a video going over straightening out a neck. I guess that I wonder what you mean by that. Because, like, sometimes, I mean, sometimes if it's just regular setup with your truss rod and you've got too much relief in your neck, then I actually covered that in my unboxing video. But, uh, yeah, and you know, I'm not a, I'm not a tinker. You know, I could spend my time tuning my head, adjusting my tailpiece, trying different bridges, doing different finger picks, trying a different capo, trying all the different sets of strings, or I could spend my time picking. I'd rather pick. Uh, <laughs> Scott, I'm trying to answer everything. <laughs> Let's see. Can I talk about getting a good sound during a slide? Well, yeah. So, I mean, you got you got to you got to be committed. So, when you're going to do a slide, you've got to be committed to it. Don't go. You don't want to go. Da, da, da. You want to move through it. Pick the note. Slide the note. Don't try to pick and slide at the same time. Pick the note, slide the note. Pick, slide. But, so hit the note, then slide. So, so I'm I'm sliding from three to eight. So I have to look. If I don't look, there. Let's go back to when I look at my left hand. If I don't look, I miss the note. Uh, so, uh, and I don't I don't really tell a difference based on the string gauge. I, I use different gauges on different banjos here. I've got some banjos I use a little heavier gauge. This one I use a light gauge. So I, I don't notice a difference. Linda, five string, but the neck is too long for your arm. Now, I don't know how big you are. And I don't know how tall you are. But I've taught some kids and if you're an adult, chances are you can reach it. It makes my arm tired. Yeah. But you'll build up stamina. So uh, I, I, I think it's just a matter of getting used to it. I really do. Uh, let's see. What tips do you have about buying a banjo? 
man, there's, there's, there's so much online right now as far as tips and banjo things. But as far as for me, you know, just, you, know, you, you got to think about your budget and, and then you're going to read all the reviews and, and you're going to look at whatever, you know, go play them, go touch them. If you don't play that well, Get somebody that you know that picks and take them with you. I had a student of mine, and he was ready to move up. He wanted a good banjo. And this was back when Banjo.com was in Atlanta. And Will called me up and said, hey, will you go to Banjo.com with me? I, I, I want to get a banjo. And so we went down and picked banjos, and I played them for him. And he, he found the one that he, at, you know, with my help, he found, found a banjo that he really liked. And that's just a, but shop within your budget, buy some from somewhere reputable. If you can, uh, it's, it's worth a few dollars more to buy from somewhere that, that knows banjos. Uh, you know, you can get a banjo off of Amazon, but who knows where it's coming from, or you can buy a banjo and it's not even a commercial and, a, you know, but you can buy one from banjo.com. You could buy one from, uh, Jeff Howald in Atlanta, or there's elderly instruments or Brunenzio or Carter's or Gruen's or anywhere that sells banjos that knows the instruments and understands how they work and set up. And, and that that's, that's the, really the way to go there. Uh, let's see. Do I prefer railroad spikes or fifth string capo? I have spikes on all my banjos. I've had, I've had the little sliders. I've had the old Pittman one with this little spring that slid around and buzzed and made a racket. And then I've had the Shubs style uh, fifth string capo. And I had I, once upon a time, I bought some of those little Reagan ones that, that attach to the string. And I've seen all of that. The spikes just work and they work every time. And it's just, for me, it's just way less hassle. And, you know, and, and the landscape looks pretty nice this way. And I don't have some sort of gadget on the neck. But, I mean, a lot of pros, I mean, use use a fifth string capo. And that's cool. And if that works for you, that's great. I just prefer the spikes. Tell us about the icon top right corner. That's my family crest. It's French. That's a Panettiere. Family crest, yeah. My name got butchered when we came to America. Let's see. What's my favorite Johnny Cash song? You know, I don't know. I like a lot of I like a lot of Johnny Cash stuff, but I, it just really doesn't come up in the bluegrass jam that often. Let's see. How do you split up your practice time? New stuff, old stuff, scales, techniques. The biggest part of my practice time these days is me warming up. I mean, I, I, I'm just sitting and play and just lick. And then I'll play songs. I, and I can honestly say I never practiced scales ever. I don't, I don't think there was ever a point in my life where I practiced scales. I mean, I can play some. And some licks based on that, but I, I don't, I don't usually do that. Uh, techniques. Yeah, if I'm learning something new, but really as far as techniques go, I haven't added an, any kind of new right or left hand techniques to my playing and, 30 years, you know, I, I'm still playing the same stuff that I was forever ago. Uh, lesson number two is out there. If you'll find the play, uh, uh, I'm sorry, can't find lesson number two. It's out there. I promise you. If you look in the description of lesson number one, lesson number two is there. So that'll take you there. Uh, do you think it's a bad idea to practice with a banjo mute on? I don't. Uh, And I never have. I have a mute and I will use a mute if I'm looking for a particular sound, but I don't practice with a mute because I'm I'm always I'm practicing not only I'm see the banjo is more about just notes. It's more about it's more than that. It's more than just a string of notes strung together. And so there's 
there's dynamics and volume, or well, which is part of dynamics. And, you know, and there's all of these things that you can't really work on that well with a mute. You can't work on your tone with a mute because different, different pick attack and big, different ways of hitting the strings. If you've got a mute on, you don't know what you're doing. I mean, you're just making your banjo quiet. So I, I mean, I, I'm pretty picky about tone. And so I'm, I'm always, I'm always thinking about what, what that sounds like and how, how it sounds. And if I have a mute, then I don't, I don't know what the, what that sounds like. So I, I don't think it's a bad idea. I just think it's something that I don't do. I mean, if you live in a situation where, you know, your neighbors are going to be mad at you for playing loud or, or if you, you're like me and have the urge to pick the banjo at three in the morning, then maybe a mute might be a good idea. But me, I just always picked whenever I felt like I could pick. All right. What are some common mistakes that inhibit good tone? Like my gold tone. Uh, but the tone isn't what I want. And I wonder how much it's just my clumsiness. Well, you know, a lot of it's just a matter of sitting and practice and putting, putting the time in just to see how your banjo works. I don't think there's really common mistakes. I mean, pick attack, how fast you hit the strings, how soft you hit the strings or how hard you're hitting the strings, uh, follow through, uh, how well you're noting the strings with your left hand. All of those things come into play you know, when we're talking about tone, but, and then sometimes, you know, I don't know what the CC, the, that Cripple Creek bluegrass band, I don't remember that one, uh, but you should be able to get a fairly decent tone out of it. And, and, and my advice is like record it and listen back to it. Cause what coming out the front is different than what you're hearing up at your ears. Let's see. Okay. Ruh -roh. Hang on, y'all. I got to scroll back up. I hit that button again. <laughs> I don't want to miss anybody. And so y'all, y'all bear with me. Oh, there we go. Uh, any tips for melodic style when you're playing multiple tones in a row on the fourth string? Sounds a bit clunky and maybe there's something to be done. Yeah, you know, you can do hammer-ons. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so... And I don't play a lot of melodic stuff, really, so... Yeah, so it sounds... Like particularly clunky when I do it. Yeah, I mean, just, I mean, Scott Vestal is a master of that. I, I, I listen to Scott play and sometimes I can't tell what single string and what's melodic and, and that's just all his right hand attack and makes all of that just sound, sound so, uh, Sounds so fluid and smooth. Sarah asked, what's the best tip for a beginner? Practice. Play all the time. Play as much as you can. Polish what you know. Really get it in your head. Don't go from song to song to song. Don't barely get Cripple Creek under your fingers before you go trotting off to Bowling Cabs Down or Beverly Hillbillies. Get Cripple Creek. Polish the heck out of it. I mean, really make it smooth and play it a bunch. Play it for hours. I want you to be able to play it in your sleep because that's when you know it's assimilated. It's all in your head. You know you can get it out anytime you want, and then you can start picking it apart. So that that's a huge tip. A tip that was given to me by Raymond Fairchild. I was probably 15 years old, and I was standing there picking his old RB1. He let me, let me pick it. And he was talking to my dad, and uh, I was picking and he turned around and said to me, he says, you're doing real good, boy, but don't copy nobody. And I'm thinking, huh, what's he mean? And what he means was, you know, try to try to find your own way. And so so I did. So I did. Yeah, Evan, Evan has great advice. Your fingers are ballerina toes. That's right. 
Uh, <laughs> what is the proper pick distance off the tip of your fingers? Well, they're your fingers, they're your picks. It's whatever's comfortable. This is uh, this is what I do. Mine are about like that, okay? So that's that's me. But I guarantee you, you know, if you look at other people's picks, John Hickman wears his way out long, wore his way out long, and 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 and, and almost. Let me get over here in the in the dark and almost straight. I mean, different people wear different things. Wear what's comfortable for you. I, there's not a right answer. There. I mean, I've seen people go through what looked like a doctoral dissertation on the proper pick distance and the proper angle and all of these things. It has to be just so. And there's probably some truth to that. But again, it's your fingers. You know, this guy was saying like, well, you know, if you don't have that angle, you can't get to good tone. And I'm going, well, John Hickman, John Hickman gets great tone and he's got his picks almost out straight and on the tips of his fingers. So, you know, it's it's what that uh so you so ed basically yeah your best guess is probably your best guess uh harrison upton i don't use picks will that affect my playing speed probably won't might not affect your speed sure it's going to affect your tone and your volume i mean picks <laughs> No picks. Huge difference. And if you ever play with other people, put your picks on. You need to wear your picks. If you're going to play bluegrass banjo, again, it's your banjo. You can do whatever you want with it. If you're going to play bluegrass banjo, put your picks on. Put your picks on. It's going to make a difference. It's going to make a difference. But, Jim, they're uncomfortable. Yeah. It also hurt my fingers when I started playing. So do I have to use my left hand? Because it kind of hurts. Can I just play without using my left hand? No. I mean, we had to get through the uncomfortable situation of that. So you you, 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 you can use picks. I, I seriously, use your picks. Uh, uh, Flint Hill Special. I'm pretty sure I have one out there. It, and here's But here's the caveat with that. It's not going to be a spoon-fed little tiny bites at a time to walk an absolute beginner through Flint Hill Special. If you are ready to do Flint Hill Special, then my video that's out there is appropriate for you. I slow it down. I talk about some of the tricky stuff, but I don't talk about all of the stuff that I'm doing. And, and you but if you're ready for it and you've been practicing, yeah, then you can do, then use my video that's out there. You can, you can do it. I promise you. Uh, hey, Evan, thanks for stopping in, man. We'll see you on the, we'll see you around somewhere. We need to pick. Uh, chicken reel. Not on, not on bluegrass. I play, I play it on, uh, I play it on claw hammer banjo, but I've never, I never played it. Uh, eight, nine slide quarter note to eighth note and I get the nine to sound right. How does, oh. How's it go? That's weird. I've never played that. So the 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 tip I can give you there is whack the dickens out of that eight. And then when you go to the nine, da, da, you still got enough energy in that string. Da, so yeah, really. What 
so what goes on? So that's the lick I need. All right, somebody asked how do I go about learning a new song. So here it is. So I know in my head, Chicken Reel goes. So I'm trying to pick that. So that's the liquor. So that's kind of how I would go. And then once I got to that point, then I would start just uh, just practicing that little trouble spot. You, you heard my trouble spot. That little part, I would sit and work on that. So I'd sit and work on that until I was super comfortable with it. Uh, Jingle Boy, have I written anything original? Yeah, I've written a bunch of contrived stuff and written some songs and some picking stuff. And, uh, but I mean, not, nothing that you've ever heard, nothing that I've really ever played out. Uh, let's see. Hey y'all, I appreciate all your thank yous and y'all are y'all are so y'all are so welcome. I mean, I I, I do this because I love banjo and I and I, I do this just because uh you know it's it's what I love. And I, I love to help y'all. I, I love to hear y'all pick and I love to hear you learn. Uh let's see. Any advice on double jointed pinkies? I have the slightest clue, man. Uh but I'm sure that with enough practice, you can sort it out. I mean, it's your pinky. It's your pinky. So, you know, you make it behave. Uh, uh, hey, Sean. Cool. You got the RK35. Man, that's a great banjo. I love mine. It's it's right here behind me, behind the couch here. Uh, <laughs> my living room butts into the dining room the dining room half of the dining room is musical instruments uh it's just kind of how it is uh but as far as setup i didn't do much to it and and i have a i've got a video out there where i talk about my setup on the rk35 so you you can find that let's see here hey ken roberts uh, finding the learning the notes, but the timing, but not the timing. So when I play the tune, melody doesn't stand out and it doesn't sound right. Ken, are you learning from tab? That would be the first thing I would ask. If you're learning from tab, then you got to watch the timing count on the tab. If you are learning by ear, play the song play what you hear. Uh, I was trying to think of a, I was trying to think of a situation. So like boil them cabbage down. Boil them cabbage down. See down rings as long, so I got to put a lot of space. Bake them whole cakes brown. The only song that I can sing is boil them cabbage down. So sing the song. Then, because if I don't, so if I do, so if I do pinches, a lot of students will go. And they're not giving the time value of those notes. And I'm, I'm not counting. I never count. I mean, I, I don't. But I know where the rhythm goes. So if if it doesn't sound like the song, gosh, I sound like Archie Campbell, Doc Archie Campbell off a of hee haw. You know, somebody come in and say, Doc, it hurts when I do this. And he'd smack him and say, well, don't do that. But if it's not sounding like the song and you know it's the timing, then you, you sing the song. Can you sing the song? If you can sing it or if you can sing the notes, 
then that should help you get the notes the right direction and get them, get them in the right time. Let's see. Hey, here's, here's, here's a heck of advice. 99% of what I play now, I learned from playing Cripple Creek a million times. That's a fact. Cripple Creek is such a great tune. Cripple Creek, one of, one of my old hobbies was magic. I did magic tricks. I, you know, I wanted to be a magician. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a magician. Little did I know I was going to be a musician. But it was close. Starts and ends with the same. But like in, in magic, 99% of what I learned in magic came from cups and balls. One illusion, 99% of everything I ever used everywhere else in magic came from cups and balls. Same thing with Cripple Creek. There's so much there. Uh, do you think you'll do another step-by-step -step playlist to your beginner guide? No, I won't. Because if you went through the step-by-step -step playlist, or if you went through the step-by-step -step of the beginner guide, Here's what I hope you got. I hope you didn't learn Cripple Creek. I hope you didn't learn Banjo in the Hollow. And I hope you did not learn Boil and Cabbage Down. That wasn't the goal. That was not the goal of those lessons. I didn't teach you Cripple Creek. I didn't teach you Boil and Cabbage Down. I didn't teach you Banjo in the Hollow. I know, mine's blown. What? Those are the songs I learned. No, I used Cripple Creek to teach you how slides work. I teach you uh, banjo in the hollow to teach you some up the neck positions that are movable and teach you a forward and reverse roll. I use those songs as tools to teach you techniques that you can use to play everything. Literally everything I play with very few exceptions comes from that information that I taught in those first 10 lessons. I do have another playlist that is called Learn These Next. And it's got stuff in it like Home Sweet Home, Valley of Jay Clampett, Foggy Mountain Breakdown, Cumberland Gap, where you learn some other little different techniques. But honest and for true, if you got through the first 10 lesson series, you've got enough information there to to never look at another beginning intermediate or advanced banjo book at all if you will just take that information and go pick go pick find a song you want to learn or a song you know in your head and try to take those techniques that you learned from those 10 lesson series and try to build that song perfect example Let's say I want to build a bookshelf. Now, down in my basement, I've got some wood, just scrap lumber. And I don't have a lot of tools, y'all. I don't have a shop, but I've got a handsaw, and I've got a bracing bit, and I've got some screws. I can make a bookshelf. Now, it may not be the fanciest Norm Abrams bookshelf you ever saw, and it probably won't even be as nice as what Roy Underhill on the Woodbright shop might build. But you could look at my bookshelf and go, oh, that's a bookshelf. It's not great, but it's recognizable. And so you can take those tools and techniques that I teach in that first beginner series and, and, and play any song you want. So no, I'm probably not going to, I'm not going to continue the beginner series because I taught you pretty much everything I know there. Uh, how many times do you play the upper and lower parts of Cripple Creek? Two and two. Two, two times on both parts. Two times on both parts. And I talk about that in the I talk about that in my video. So low part. That's one. That's two. one that's two
So two and two, two times A part, two times B part. Just about every fiddle tune, old time tune are, are like that. Uh, are you familiar with Jerry Garcia's banjo playing? Yes, I am. How, how proficient do you think he was? Pretty good banjo picker. Uh, I think he picks just fine. When does the day come where you can play a song without mistakes, without warming up? Ha! I'll let you know when I find out, Severin. I'm still working on that. No, I still have to war warm up, man. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Well, Shane, you know, I'm missing the overalls too, but I lost, I've lost i lost 52 pounds and all of my overalls, they look like clown overalls at this point. And uh, I just hadn't replaced them. So I'm, I'm down to jeans. I'm down to jeans and a t-shirt, you know, and it's summertime. So, uh, yeah, let's see. On a three, two pull off, it looks like you pluck and then fret with the index after you pluck. I don't. That index is down. Sometimes, but get that finger down. And I've got a video on that. I've got a video on that where I talk about the three to two pull off. Uh, let's see here. Playing for over 20 years and I feel stuck. Yeah, man, I feel you. Uh, I had been playing for about 15 years and I felt the same way. And so I, I got on the phone with a, somebody I really respected as a musician and said, hey, if I drive up to your house, which was about 12 hours away or so, would you spend some time and just show me some things, some new stuff? And uh, so I went and spent about three hours with him and, and I'm still working on stuff he showed me. So it, it, that was a really good way to get unstuck. If you have an opportunity to do a workshop or go to a workshop or a clinic where there's somebody you really like that, that's a great idea. Uh, yeah, Ben, that's, that's my family crest. Uh, Uh, the banjo does make you happy or sad part of the voice. Yeah, it does. It, it's definitely my voice. It's definitely my voice. I mean, I, I really, I really feel like the, let's see, Thomas, uh, I'm a newbie and can I play better banjo if you wear overalls? You dang right you can. Go get you some overalls. Get you some pointers. Get you some pointers made in Bristol, Tennessee. Uh, do you know if it's harder to learn banjo being dyslexic? I have trouble focusing on my left hand. Still can't get past video four on Cripple Creek. Thanks. Well, you will. And it's been a long time since, since I worked with anybody with dyslexia. And, and I, I do have some familiarity with just a little history. I, I'm a former, former vocational teacher and uh, did a lot of vocational special needs students and dealt with a lot of dyslexic students. And, yeah, where you are in, in this in this process right now, it's uh, it's confusing because I mean you got a lot of numbers and you're trying to get all of that together, but but can you sing it? Can you sing the song? Can you hum the song? If you can sing it, then Try that. Try that. Stop trying to memorize three, two, five, one, three, two, five, one. Stop, stop thinking about that. I think that'll help you. I don't know. It's been a long time, but think of the song. Think of the think of the song. Best mute, you know, gold tone makes a pretty nice mute. It looks like a big, big brass bobby pin, and it just, you know, it just slides down. But, you know, you could have one right. If you've got a clothespin, you can have a mute. So I, I used to use a clothespin. Uh, let's see. Oh, how long have I been playing the banjo? 
let's see, about 55 minutes right at this point. <laughs> uh, most men haven't really been doing that. Most have been talking. I, I started playing in 1977. Uh, Let's see. I'm a classically trained saxophonist and flautist. Do you know whether I'll be able to transfer any of those skills when I learn the banjo? Music is music. So you're going, it, you should already be able to hear music. And so why no, you know, you can blow into that fifth string peg all you want to and pretend you got a bass saxophone but it's not going to work. But, but your fingers are nimble. And, and while the fingerings are all different, the notes and scales and all of that's the same. So you, you've got, you've got music in your head, so you, you'll be able to do it. You'll be able to do it. I promise you. Let's see. $150 in 1977. So I guess Joshua, if somebody can do the math on that, what's that worth now? But I'll tell you, that banjo was $150 in 1977. You can buy that same, not that one, but you can buy one that looks identical to it for about 150 bucks now. So really, let's see. So banjos have gotten cheaper. Uh, What software am I using to simulcast to YouTube and Facebook? Hang on, Josh. I'll show you. So I am using StreamYard, and it's an online service. It's 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 easy, super easy. And uh, if I would pay for more features, I could simulcast it to everywhere. But I can I can do two at a time. So StreamYard. I like StreamYard. Do banjos have different width necks? My banjo neck feels very thin, and sometimes I struggle to get chord shapes near the nut end. They, do, you can get different width necks. My my old time banjo has a different width neck than this. But if you've got a fairly modern, new banjo by a regular, you know, whether it's Recording King or Fender or Ibanez or Gold Tone. All of those necks are fairly standard width. You can do it. If Dennis Kaplinger can play the banjo with his big old fingers, you can too. On a, you know, you you can do it. Uh, I, I I always think of Jack Weeks. He was a local guy. He was a fantastic fiddler, one of the best fiddlers ever lived. And, and I and I don't say that just. I'm not being generous. I mean, the man was amazing uh he had big huge fingers and he played in the little narrow fiddle neck you know what a big wide neck and so you you can do it you can do it uh but they do make them but you know and, and you could ask a you could ask a builder to build you a wider neck have i met tony trishka yes i have yes i have uh and how important is that wide neck and will it make a difference when learning to play i don't think so i mean unless you've just got an extra skinny neck some of the banjos like from the the 60s and early 70s like the real el cheapo banjos some of those had an extra narrow neck and yeah i i i wouldn't recommend that but anything with a standard width is fine do i have any banjo ukuleles i have one here that and it's 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 one of the recording king Madison banjo ukes. It's a lot of fun. Uh, when am I going to do a show on ukuleles? When I get a ukulele, when I get an audience that wants to talk, wants me to talk about ukuleles. I, I mean, I love them. I, I I'm 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 a ukulele nut, and I got a I got a ton of them. And I I've posted some ukulele stuff out on my Instagram. 
All right, Rod wants to see the demonstration of the Cheetah Keys. So my Cheetah Keys. So let me scoot up here so you can see what they look like. Uh, let's see, which way did I go? There we go. So, so they're mounted to the, to the headstock. See, and no tools required. And uh, and when I turn this one down, you see see that little uh, that little peg right there. You can see that move. So. Those are the cheetah keys. Uh, they're pretty cool. Everybody needs to set. They're about 150 bucks, and uh, I mean, if you got a 150 dollar banjo, you know that's the whole 100 dollar saddle on a 40 dollar horse kind of situation. You may not want to, but but they. But if you get the wide ones, and they come in two widths, they come in a narrow width and a wide width. And I just bought the wide ones. That way, if, you know, I want to put them on anything, they, they'll go. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, 10 pounds, 10, 11, 12 pounds. That's usually what banjos weigh. And when I was first learning to pick, that's how I knew whether a banjo was going to be any good or not. I, I'd walk into a, I'd walk into a store and go, huh. That one's heavy. That one's probably pretty good. That was the only way I knew if any, any of them was any good. So, uh, yeah. let's see. Steve asked, would I teach how to play dueling banjos? Well, no. I, I mean, I've got a video out there where I break it down. I go slow. If you've been through the beginner series and you truly assimilated that information where, remember, I didn't teach you Cripple Creek. I didn't teach you Bowling Cabbage Down. And I didn't teach you Banjo and Hollow. I taught you how to do slides, hammers, pull-offs, and some rolls, and how to mix those together to turn them into songs. So dueling banjos, all right. I bet every everyone here knows how to go da 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 Then do it on the banjo. I'm not going to teach you that. Hunt that. Hunt that. Hunt. Hunt that. Find it. Hunt and peck. You don't need a tab for that. You can sing the notes. Da 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 da. da. Find it. Find it on one string. I mean, you can do that. Hunt and peck the notes. You will learn a world of stuff if you will just hunt and peck. Just hunt the notes. Don't, you don't, you can do it. I promise you. Now, what you say, yeah, that's okay. I, I can figure it. What, what about that fast part? Listen to it. Figure out the chords. Where does it go to? Well, let's see. It goes, it, it's in G. So, da, 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 da. So, in my brain, I'm going, okay, it goes to C. Something in C, something in G. Okay, something in D. Something in G. It's different every time I play it. I found the chords. And how did I find the chords? Trial and error. I'd listen. I'd play the chord along with the recording. I go, no, nope, that's not it. Nope, that's not it. Nope, that's not it. Oh, that's it. So when he goes to that part of the song, oh, that's going to go to a D chord. Oh. And so I'd remember. And then take and put your slides and hammers together. It's, it, 
it's all there. So you can you can do it. You can do it. Uh, Katie, I doubt your fingers are shorter than my student Trevor Holders were when he started playing the banjo. I seriously doubt it. Seriously doubt it. Uh, it's practice. It really is. It really is. And, and you can do it. What do I think of Steve Martin playing the banjo? Oh, yeah, he's good. I've, I've known, I, I knew Steve played the banjo way back when. He had an album out, the Steve Martin Brothers, One Side Was Comedy and One Side Was Banjo. Yeah. Let's see. Do I ever tour in the UK? Uh, I've been to, I've been to Ireland twice, been to Northern Ireland twice. So technically Northern Ireland, I've been to the UK a couple of times. 2016 was the last time I was there. Uh, would love, would love to do, would love to, you know, I'd like to do England, Scotland and Wales too, at some point and just do, do that. And, uh, maybe I put, put me to get, put me together a tour. I'd love to do it. Uh, I'll take you up on your pint. Let's see. I notice when you do the two to five slide, y'all also plant your ring finger. Uh, I, I don't know what you mean. Uh, talking about on my left hand or my right hand we'll come back to that let's see when you hear Scruggs play backup it almost sounds like he's just playing the normal melody well he's not uh, he's not so like on Cripple Creek Earl's playing the, the melody but when he's playing the, the backup he's going uh, the fiddle player going, da, 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 da. He, and Earl's going. <laughs> He's not really playing the melody. And so you just. Yeah. So backup is different. I'm, and I've got a series. I've got a six or seven lesson series on banjo backup out there too. So it, it, it's a, uh, it's a playlist. So you can find that recommended length. Yeah. Finger pick length and what works for you works for you. Uh, let's see. Uh, developing rolling backup, play a whole lot of rolling backup. Uh, <laughs> and I've, I've got, I've got videos. I mean, really, is it, honest guys, there's no secrets here. I mean, there's not, there's not like some banjo fraternity and we're with, it's not like magicians where we don't tell how we do the tricks. The, 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 the trick is with a banjo is, you know, we're, we just sit for hours until it sounds right. I followed your lessons. I have a decent grasp of cripple Creek. Can I move straight into man of constant sorrow? I wouldn't. I'd go ahead and get a decent grasp of banjo in the hollow and I would get a decent grasp of bowling cabbage down and a decent grasp, grasp of Beverly Hillbillies, home sweet home, Cumberland gap, a whole bunch of stuff before I start, you know, you can't work backwards. And so I really recommend to get a good grasp of the banjo before you dive into some of the tunes, other things that I've got out there. It's like, man, I only ever wanted to learn banjo so I could play, play that song. And yeah. So learn to play banjo. Don't learn to play the song. So that's my, my advice. Uh, what do I think about the Dillards and what makes Doug sound so unique? Doug sounds unique because he's Doug. Uh, I mean, one, he's playing arch stop banjo. Uh, two, he's got it set up really tight and a really thin bridge. 
but it's also him. It's it's just him. Uh, what's my take on speed neck? I've never had one. Never felt like I needed one. I, I don't. Maybe you know some people like them, and uh, I, I've never felt like I I needed a speed neck. I I go I go fast enough. I go fast enough on just old slick regular old neck. I you know Earl didn't have one. You know. <laughs> Tips on finger pick discomfort. Keep shaping them until they feel right. And, and, and just wear them a bunch. Wear them a bunch. Uh, row, row. Let me scroll. I've done messed up. I hit that button again, y'all. 20 lashes for Jim. Y'all got tons of questions here. Uh, let's see. Uh, need to playing banjo and okay at picking patterns when I get muting strings or holding strings. I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, I mute. So I do that, but I don't do any kind of right hand mutes. Rowan, no, I've not done a banjo strap video uh, other than me to say something like, get a banjo strap. Uh, get one that's comfortable. Get one you like. I wear this narrow one. Hurts my shoulder. But, boy, it looks cool. And so that's <laughs> that's the reason I do it. Uh, yeah, I'm that vain. Uh, let's see. Is is your banjo positioning the same in sitting and standing? So watch. So here I am sitting. Here I am standing. Sitting. Standing. Sitting. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same. Do I ever get up to Dunlap? Boy, I try not to. No, I'm just teasing. Yeah, every now and then. It's been a while since I've been, been all the way to Dunlap. Let's see. Tell Ed Brown hello for me. What do you do about corroding strings? Change them. Put some new strings on. Uh, I change mine when they start getting a little corroded. Your strings are a quarter of an inch apart. That may be a little narrow. That may be a little narrow. Uh, I don't know what these are, but they're a little... Hang on, I'll be right back. I go get a ruler. I'm not gone, y'all. I'm just I've turned invisible for my next trick. Let's see. Let's let's talk about y'all are asking a lot about string space and and a lot of this comes from y'all being real concerned about whether or not you know, I can't do this. It must be the banjo. It's probably not the case. Probably not the case. So the string spacing on my instrument. Let's see. I reckon I'm going to be doing these in, in inches. And I can, do them, I can do them in a metric here too. But my string spacing is, heck, I don't know. My string spacing is about an inch from from the uh, from the fourth string center of the fourth string to the center of the first string. It's about an inch. Uh, I don't know if that's normal or not, but but that that that's kind of what I'm seeing. And so, but the space in between my strings is uh, It's about three eighths of an inch. Oh, obviously about three eighths of an inch or a little more. So that's that's that. Uh, so pretty. If you buy a recording king banjo, it'll have it'll have this string spacing, and it's pretty dang comfortable. It is to me. 
Uh, what about strings, light or medium? <laughs> I use everything I use on, on this banjo. I've got lights, just regular, like a Vega light. Um, and then on my, on my RK 35, I use the nine and a half set. Like, so it's a little heavier. And then on my price, a Gary price banjo, I use tens on it. So I use a variety of different strings. Uh, Any tips on getting claw hammer to click for somebody who only plays three finger? Go watch my videos. I have a, I made a set of videos, claw hammer for the bluegrass banjo picker. So maybe that'll help. I don't know if I've ever capoed all the way to F for Man of Constant Sorrow, but I reckon you could. I, I guess. I I don't know. I don't even know what key I played it in for the video. I'm that bad. Uh, I thought I played it in G. So if you're going to capo to F, you got to capo all the way to the 10th fret. Um, let's see here. Y'all bear with me. I mean, there's, I'm not even halfway through. So if, if I didn't ask you, answer your question, you're still adding to the pile. It just makes this pile even bigger. Let's see. Uh, uh, Gary Curtis, go to my 10 lessons. There's three songs in there. Those are the ones I recommend. Cripple Creek, Banjo and the Holla, Bowling and Cabbage Down. Uh, Do I have a tutorial on Sally Gooden in the future? I don't, but uh, Eli Gilbert's got one. It's a good one. Uh, let's see. Any chance of doing a video on improvising? I've, I've done a couple of things like that. There's one where I play a couple of different songs and different keys and just kind of make it up as I go. I, I don't remember the title, but but I've done that. But the... There's no secret to this. There, there's no secret. You, you learn to improvise simply by improvising. I can't tell you how to improvise because if I do, then you're not improvising. You are just playing what I told you. You learn to improvise by improvising. You, you And gosh, I know that sounds like a flippant answer, and I sure as heck don't mean it to be. But gosh, I mean, you really, that, that's one of those things that you learn to do by doing it. And if you're married to a piece of paper and you're playing it all off the tab and you're memorizing all of these things, that's good to a point. But you really have to start breaking those pieces out and saying, oh, and, and I show you that I show you that in the 10 lessons. I don't I don't come right out and just beat on it and, you know, grab you by the collar and say, look at this. But well, look at this here. I So I'm going to do that now. So we learned Cripple Creek. All right, here, let's switch way to move here. Here we go. We learned Cripple Creek, and we, here, I'm going to hide your question, Andrew. Uh, so we're doing that slide. So we do that in Cripple Creek. But you know what else I teach you in those 10 lessons series? I teach you boiling cabbage down. It's the same, same little bit. It's the same thing. So you can take it from that first Cripple Creek lick, and we're going to play that Cripple Creek lick everywhere. All right. Another example. Of, so you got going up the Cripple Creek, going in the run, all them cabbage down, bake them whole cakes brown. So there's that slide. Or we got, there's a well-beaten path on this mountain side where I wandered when I was a lad. So we've got that lick that we use everywhere. And so in, in, in Boiling Cabbage Down, I teach you the, the high part. 
Well, that lick is the same lick in Foggy Mountain Breakdown. So it's the same lick. So, yeah, improvising, just start arranging your own songs. There's no, there's no secret to it. And just don't be afraid to screw up. Don't be afraid to screw up. Let's see. Uh, bought a banjo a few months ago. I'm still frightened by it. I hope you can do a lesson on nine pins by the meat puppets. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen, man. I don't even know who that is. <laughs> I'm not thinking that they play bluegrass, though. Let's see. Well, I disappeared and I came back. That's my magic trick for the day. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, I'm getting there. Uh oh, here's one. I have issues keeping my ring and pinky fingers planted in scrub style. Any suggestions? Plant them. You know, you know that there's a problem. You know that you're, you know, you you catch yourself picking them up. Put them back. Just keep putting them back. Eventually. Eventually, it's gonna it's gonna make it's gonna make sense. Uh, there's no there's no trick to that. There's not a trick. There's not a trick. You want to keep your fingers planted? Plant a plant a pinky. Plant a ring. Plant them both. Plant something, and just do it and stick with it. it, it it's fine. It's fine. Hold on. Huh? Y'all go away. There we go. Sorry, y'all. Cats are. On the warpath, let's see. Uh, big hang. Let's see. Play most of the tunes posted in that blue ball. My big hang up. Struggle singing. Yeah, me too. Singing's like everything else. It's something you just have to practice. You just have to practice. All right. Let's see. Yeah, 150 bucks then. It's about 680 now. Unfortunately. Or the, the truth of the matter is, though, that same banjo today would still cost you about 150 bucks. So it's not like I bought a $600 banjo, but it was because it's not. But anyway. Uh, hmm, I play in Waylon Jennings' band. I'd just be Waylon Jennings. That's what I would do. No, <laughs> yeah, I, lo I love the outlaw country stuff. Uh, uh, is during good time a good first buy? Yeah, it, it'll do you for a while. Uh, Am I thinking of roles when I'm playing? No, I'm thinking about what's for lunch. I'm thinking about what I've got to do later. I, I'm not thinking of roles. I'm never thinking of roles. I mean, almost never. Uh, what would you recommend to clean up the chrome on the banjo? Hang on, I'll show you. I'll be right back. All right, another magic trick. I've disappeared.
what do I use? I use this. This is what I clean if and when I clean a banjo and I never clean mine. This is what I use. And I've had this. I mean, a tube of this stuff will last you forever. I mean, it comes in a little old timey metal tube. They may be in something different now, but I, I mean, I've had this. I've, I've got two tubes of this. This is the one I hadn't opened yet. But I mean, I've had them for ever. I mean, forever. Semichrome. You can find them at the Harley shop or wherever. I mean, there's that, that works great. Uh, Hey, Severin, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it. Appreciate that. that. That makes me feel good. Let's see. I don't know how much money that is, but it's one of them. That's pretty cool. <laughs> hey, thank you. Uh, Any idea how to loop audio so I can continuously play lead and backup? Man, I don't know. That's that's so outside of my wheelhouse. I, I'm not real sure. I'm not real sure that about that. That that, that would be fun. Yeah, there's all kind of practice stuff out there and loopers and different things. I'm sure. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, you can probably loop stuff in Amazing Slowdowner. I think uh, that might be a Pretty cool thing. Let's see. Can you also show us how the left hand for a right-handed person should look? Should the wrist stay straight or can my palm be collapsed against the back of the neck for more pressure? Do not collapse your palm on the back of the neck. Uh, I tend... I don't know if I can show you this or not. We'll try. My, my head stalks in the way, but I rest on that right there, that knuckle, that, that joint, the banjo sits on that joint right there and touches here. I don't rest here. I don't, I don't grab the band. It's not a ball bat. What I tell kids is this banjo neck is made out of lava. The only thing that can stand to touch it is that little joint, right? That little joint right there or you, you know, that little joint and then that joint on your thumb. And so that's, because if I put my palm up here, then I don't have hardly any mobility at all. And then my hand's stuck. If I'm like this, then I've got a whole lot more mobility. So don't collapse your palm against the neck. You're not going to get more pressure that way. I promise you. You might right now, but keep practicing, keep practicing. What did I eat for breakfast? <laughs> I had an enchilada for breakfast. How about that? Wanda, have you found me on you on uh, Instagram yet? Let's see. <laughs> Got some out there. Uh, yeah, I know they make bibs in my size, but they're about 80 bucks a pop. So uh, just kind of not got there yet at least the ones i want to wear lance i'm just not comfortable doing the skype or facetime lessons i'm really not i mean it's just it's it's awkward i like to reach out and touch people you know i like to say here move this finger right there and, and that's hard to do i find myself pointing at stuff when i'm doing a skype or facetime lesson and and you don't know what I'm pointing at, so it's it's really hard. Uh, oh, yeah, Josh explains. Yeah, man, I don't know. Just about anything could happen. <laughs> All right, so let's let's talk about this fox on the run thing. <laughs> There it is. That's it. 
that's the banjo part. It's like four measures. <laughs> And then for the rest of the song, you're playing chords. Everybody knows the reason for the fall. When a woman tempted a man down in paradise is called. A woman tempted me, all right, she took me for a ride. I'm like the lonely fox, boys, I need a place to hide. It's four measures. So I really haven't done a video for it just to teach four measures, but I did the, did the video for the, Hey, what was that cool lick? So maybe, maybe, I don't know, man. Uh, it's just, but there's a reason why I haven't done Fox on the run because I don't really have an arrangement beyond just that kickoff because that's all I ever needed. Uh, Uh, use cheetah keys, detuners are the other songs besides the ones you covered in the video that you recommend. Oh, you mean about the uh, with the detuners? Man, you can play anything with detuners. I mean, you can play Cripple Creek with detuners. Uh, let's see which way am I? There I am. Okay, but You can use them wherever you want them. Go listen to some Buck Trent. One of my early banjo influences was Buck Trent. I listened to so much Buck Trent, and he uses detuners a lot. So, yeah, go find you some Buck Trent. Have we got to the bottom of the pile? We got to the bottom of the pile. This is amazing. <laughs> so, yeah. How do I find the name of a good song I heard over the radio? You know, some radio stations keep a playlist and sometimes that's searchable. If you search, if you heard it on XM or Sir Sirius XM, they keep their playlist. They're accessible. You can find them online and you can find it that way, especially if you knew what time of day it was. If not, if you've got a, if you've got a smartphone, you can ask Siri and say, uh, Hey Siri, what was that song? And now she's. Hang on, let me listen. See, she's trying to listen for the song. Thanks, Siri. And, uh, <laughs> but there's all there. I mean, and then there's all kind of other. There's Shazam, and there's a bunch of different apps that do that. And uh, hang on while we encourage my cat to do something different. There we go. <laughs> uh, yeah. Shazam and Soundhound. That's the other one. Uh, oh, well, hey, this is a good question. When playing claw hammer, how do you manage to strike a middle string hard enough to make it sound without whacking the other string above or below it? Because I'm not whacking this way. Hang on, I'm gonna make you hide here. Uh, I'm not. I'm not going across the strings. I'm going toward the banjo. <laughs> I'm picking toward the banjo, so it's It's 
just some basic frailing, but to, so you could see that the direction is this way, not this way. And so that, that'll help you with that. Don't move on until you're comfortable, man. Stick with it until you got it. Stick with it until you're happy with it. And always keep polishing. That's such a big deal. Polish those tunes. Uh, hey, Larry, man. Yeah, I, I, I want to get together uh, just, just as soon as possible. I've been... I've been picking random days and going to the park and sitting and playing the ukulele just to see folks come out, you know? And so every now and then some folks come, but yeah, looking forward to getting together again. Where would I buy a banjo online? Mm, I don't know. There's a lot of good shops. There's banjo.com, uh, Jeff Howell banjo warehouse, uh, elderly instruments, Gruen, Carter's, Berenzio. I mean, there's a lot of good, reputable places. Uh, I probably wouldn't buy one on Amazon, just because you, unless you knew, unless you knew what that, uh, where the dealer was. Let's see here. What brands do I like? Recording King. <laughs> yeah, well, y'all know that I'm a Recording King artist. But I can play anything I want. And I've got a whole bunch of banjos and all, all sorts of different things that I can I can play. But uh, I the reason I play the recording king is I, I liked it. I was playing one before I was an artist. So you know. Let's see. What's the best fifth string capo to use? I like the spikes, you know, little, little railroad spikes. I guess you can see those. I don't know. But I, I use railroad spikes. I like them. Uh, you can tune up. Uh, but I like the spikes because if I fret the fifth string, then it's fretted right. If I tune up, then I have to think about where I need to be fretting that strings. Uh Manny, I used to play a whole lot more claw hammer than I do right now, and I, I've, I've got a hand, I, I've got a handful of videos out there, and, and I've got a playlist that's old time claw hammer songs. And my goodness, if you were to go through those, that 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 would keep you busy for a while. And you pick up, you would, if you went through two or three of them, you would learn pretty much everything I know. So, up the neck tips, yeah, practice a lot. Learn your chords, learn where your chords are, you know, give yourself little drills that you, that you know where you all your chords. So like hunt all your G's, know where all your chords are up the neck and, and that'll help. Uh, knowing that is huge. Uh, yeah, they make a small fifth string, no drill banjo, fifth string capo, and I've tried those. Put the spikes in, but I don't want to drill a hole. Well, they cut slots in your banjo neck to put in frets. So you can drill some little holes to put some spikes in. It's, I mean, come on. I mean, the original banjos didn't have frets. Somebody cut slots and put in frets. And so now we continue to do that. And, and like a lot of, a lot of shops will put, go ahead and put the spikes in for you. Like if you order, I think if you order from Jeff Howell or if you order from banjo.com or elderly or wherever, they, they'll spike your banjo for you. And that that's that way, you know, you're not doing it. Is it possible to play songs that were originally made on acoustic? I can play, I can play songs that were originally made on trumpet. I mean, it, you know, there's there's no rule about that. Play what you want. But if you're saying, can I get a guitar tab and play that on the banjo? Are you really playing the banjo or are you just repeating back a bunch of notes? So really what you want to, you know, if you if you can sing or hum the song, then you can play it on the banjo. I mean, you really can. Uh, oh, this is a good question. 
uh, any tips for adjusting your reference point when your capo is on? Oh, man. So I played in a group and we never played in B. We just never did. And then I started playing with Curtis Blackwell for about a year. And Curtis plays a bunch of stuff in B. And holy moly, what a screwed up mess I found myself in. <laughs> yeah, it's it's practice for me and just remembering to not look at the dots or remember what dots are. So suddenly my dot that I would normally use for G there's a, I got, I got dots in the way. And so I don't, I don't have a trick for that. That might be a good one to ask somebody that's like a really good player, like Eli or Jody. They, they may have an actual tip me. It's just, I'm flying by the seat of my pants here. And so when I put that cape on, yeah, I, my brain is working hard to be able to be there. All right. Here, hang on. Let me, let me check this. Da, da, da. All right. Uh, All right. Yeah, we've been here. We've got another few minutes here. Uh, yeah, and sometimes you just have to do the best you can, you know, take a song, you know, just struggle through it and make it as good as you can. Uh Will you ever be able to hear a random song and pick along to it without practicing? Heck yeah. I do that in jam sessions all the time. I've been doing that in jam sessions since 1978. You can do it too. You can do it too. What am I going to do to celebrate 50 K when it happens? You know, I don't know. I hadn't even thought about it. Am I, I guess I am close. Wow. Huh? Let's see. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't really thought much about celebration. Uh, all right. Grumpy, I, 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 did an, I did answer that. Uh, so you can go back and and read that uh, or listen, read it. Listen to it in the playback. Uh, any tips on kickoffs? I went to jam session here in Texas, and they looked at me for a kickoff. I play something different from what they know. You get so Yeah, same here. I mean – uh, you, you, you kind of have to be familiar with what they're doing to know what, yeah, there's not, not a huge, no, I got no real tip for you there other than, you know, just familiarity with how they kick stuff off. Uh, is it really important to use your thumb on the second string? Yeah, it is. It is. Don't go finger, finger, go finger, thumb. It's just going to sound better. It's going to give you more emphasis on that beat. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And so you're emphasizing that backbeat. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Uh, finding melody in the D chord. Just hunt and peck, man. I, I, I don't have any, you know, stuff like that. How, how do you know what notes to play? Or what do I do when I'm playing over a D? And honestly, I, honest to goodness, there was a world of just me hunting and pecking. off the cuff but I'm just hunting melodies and so yeah if 
tiny melody, just, just, just hang in there. Uh, hunt and peck. Don't be afraid. Well, folks, we've been at this for an hour and 45 minutes, a lot longer than I expected to. And I think Eli's got a, got a stream coming up soon. I think it may be a, maybe a Patreon only stream. And if it is, that's cool. Joshua, do you know if, if Eli's coming up is for patrons only, if it is, y'all need to be a, y'all need to like guys like Jody Hughes and uh, Eli Gilbert, y'all need to support them the best you can. I mean, that, that's uh it won't cost you much. And they both got a bunch of ton of information out there. So y'all, y'all check those out. So yeah, Josh says it's a patron only live stream, but I mean, it, it cost Josh. What what what's his what's his patron? It was like a buck or two dollars to be a patron. Yeah. So so do that. So do that. Uh. So yeah, that that y'all y'all need to support those guys. Yeah. All right, folks. Hey, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. I appreciate y'all coming, especially on three dollars. Yeah, it's worth it's worth every penny of three dollars. So. Uh, <laughs> And same with Jody. You know, Jody's is super cheap too. So, hey, I appreciate y'all coming. Uh, Hey, we'll see y'all. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye, y'all.